All right, guys, welcome to another Moby Flight release review video. My name is Sebastian. I am the creator of Moby Flight. In this video, we're going to take a look at all the cool new stuff that comes with the latest 8.2 version. <laughs> So here we are uh, at the Moby Flight project website on mobyflight.com and you can just click here on the download button that takes you to this page where you then find another bu button for actually downloading Moby Flight connector for free and you will also find the release notes for every single release and we're talking about release 8.2 so we will take a closer look at these notes. Um, the first thing to point out is that a new MobiFlight Wasm module version uh, is bundled with this release. So please make sure to install and update this module. In, it has not been easier. Uh, it, it's never been easier to do this. So I will quickly download the installer, show in folder, downloaded it before. I copy it over to a temp directory just here to start fresh and um, double click on it. I confirm that I wanna uh, install this. And now you see there's uh, another time that the release notes are displayed during startup. But now also there's this WASM module installer and you can just click on install now to make sure that you install the latest WASM module version. Awesome. Okay, let's take another look at what else we got here. Let's talk about the new features and those features are really cool. It's uh, actually, it's two stories, but I will just treat it as one, 365 and 367. They're going together with each other. The first one is that we're now able to support LVARs and AVARs via the WASM module. LVARs meaning the specific variables that uh, every single plane um, might have and a AVARs are aircraft variables which are more standardized uh, that's more standardized information which typically all the different aircraft implement and provide for uh, yeah for for reading and, and writing sometimes and uh, these are also published in the SDK by Microsoft uh, Flight Simulator. So let's take a look. I will have to quickly start my um, Microsoft Flight Simulator sim and with quickly, it's gonna take a while. Okay, the sim has loaded. I started the engine just to make sure that we're not running out of battery while, while I'm filming. And uh, yeah, so what is this now about? Uh, let's start the... Let's start movie flight one more time. Okay, so we can add aircraft and also uh, LRs now for um, for our output values. So let's do this. Let's uh, take an aircraft aircraft variable and uh, let's go into edit. And you can see that there is a new variable type available that was not before that was not available before. It's uh, beside FSUI PC offset for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, you can now use SimConnect for the WASM module. There is a preset list shipping with MobiFlight, which makes it like easier for you to start out with uh, all this stuff. But everything is also right straight taken from the documentation of the Microsoft Flight Simulator SDK. So let's say we want to read the avionics data. Let's talk about, let's take a look at COM active frequency. And it will also ask you which one, if you want COM1 or COM2. In this case, we would like to read COM1. So we confirm with index one. You can see that the variable value actually is uh, displayed here. It says A COM active frequency one, frequency BCD 16. And unfortunately, the preset in this case is it's not perfect. So we will change this to kilohertz, which makes it more easier, uh, makes it easier for us and more um, 
uh, more straightforward to use it. So kilohertz as the uh, unit, we just click OK, we enable this and we run and immediately we will see that it says 122 decimal 900 and let's take a look. Uh, indeed, this is the case for COM1 active frequency. Um, let's uh, change this over to COM2, 124850. It's really easy. You can just go here and change it to 2, say OK, and you see 124850. And of course, if we change it over to the stand from standby to active, it will um, update immediately too. So this is it for aircraft variables. Take the preset list, take a look. Um, there's a lot to choose from. Um, let's take a look at the LVARs. Okay, LVARs is something that I said is um, where we are talking about something very specific for a particular airplane. And I want to illustrate this in the uh, Coronado Piper that I'm that I have loaded up here by using the air intake switch. Yeah, this is something that not every airplane has, but with LVARs, I think I have to drag this over just a little bit. Um, yeah, we can actually see that this is accessible now. We can select SIM Connect, and now we're not using these presets. We can actually ask for a list from the SIM a list of all the variables that are um, registered right now and available. And here you can see the lever air intake is available. We use it and it populates the variable here correctly with uh, the um, correct syntax, which is L colon and then the name of the local variable. We say, OK, put this to active. And uh, right now it's showing zero. And yeah, if we drag it over, it changed to one. Well, that's super easy, isn't it? Um, so it's really straightforward and it allows us to access so many more variables. And we can also do this without using FSUIPC at all. Um, it's actually pretty fast and it works pretty well. And yeah, so please let me know what you think about it. And I can tell you, I have really switched over to SIM Connect, WASM, yeah, um, only variables, and I'm not using FSUI PC offsets anymore. And I think the benefit of doing so is that um, also if you look at the preset groups and, and the names of the variables, they're better, a little more straightforward and not as complicated as defining offsets with bytes and masks and all this stuff. So it's really fun to work with it. So please give it a try and let us know what you think by using uh, the comments here below the video or by joining Discord or our forum on mobiflight.com. All right, let's take a look at the next feature. Another improvement, and I should have probably uh, talked about this before, is fit to have screen. So fit to have screen is something really convenient when you're in the phase of kind of configuring everything and making it work with the SIM because now you can drag the SIM over to one half of your monitor display and then you can click on Mobi Flight and just have it fill like the entire other half. Uh, for some reason this was not possible. There was a little, little tiny glitch with it, but now you can use it like this and it's super convenient. convenient. Thanks for Captain Bob to actually bringing it to my attention that this was not working as expected before in older versions. Cool. All right, then what else? Uh, let's put this over here too. Um, we have allow pin zero and one for the Pro Micro board. Well, that's uh, pr probably very self-explanatory. Uh, you can use zero and one on a pro micro board as a regular pin, uh, whereas on a mega board, for example, you have the serial transce transceiving and receiving, uh, transmitting and receiving data all over these pins. And Moby Flight actually did not allow it to use those, but that's not true for the micro board. So there's no reason why you would not be able to use these pins. They're now unlocked and uh, you're good to go. 
With the 364 installer shows progress during the download and, and the install. Um, that is something that we already saw during the uh, installation process uh, early in the video. So um, we have this little nice tiny uh, progress bar and some uh, labels that kind of some, some text pointing out what it's currently working on. And I can also say, please give the installer a chance. Don't be like, uh, yeah, be a little patient. Sometimes the, the downloads still just hang a little in the beginning or maybe when you unzip, make sure that your current Movie Flight version is not running or so and it can't be uh, closed by the installer. So at least now we have a visual feedback and that's really, really handy and makes it uh, easier for everyone. So 322, make RK's board support optional to prevent a slow responsiveness. Well, that was a pretty um, ugly kind of thingy there that we, it took a while to figure out what, what, what was going on. So there were a couple and really just a handful of people reporting that MobiFlight for them would be like really slow. And uh, when they opened MobiFlight, it would take like 30 seconds up to a minute to just start and sometimes even longer. And when they went into the config wizard or so, then it would just take like forever many 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 seconds instead of you know like you see boom this is instantaneous right that's the way it should be so for those users who are experiencing this kind of legginess or this uh, slow responsiveness by MobiFlight you have now a setting here where you can enable the support where you explicitly enable or disable the support for RK's modules which also means that MobiFlight will not load the libraries in case you have deactivated it. So this solved the problem for those people and I hope it's also gonna be useful for somebody else. Okay, so the last improvement for tonight is the make sure that it's 286, make sure that when using an LCD that they use pin 20 and 21 that they're also not anymore available in the pull down menu and uh, yeah that was actually that was actually a little you could also call it a bug yeah so what that means is if you go to settings and if you um, go to the boards uh, settings and then you say uh, like for this guy here the switch panel um, let me quickly check if we have 20 or 20, ah, uh, surely we do. So let's go to the next one. So this guy probably doesn't have 20. Um, well, this is also not good. Um, let's take the, it's not good because it's a Pro Micro. Okay, so the radio. Let's see, there is no 20, 21 on this one. So if I were to go and add a new device, like a button, I could uh, easily take 20 or 21 as a, an available pin. So, but what if I go and I add a device like the LCD display, which uses these two pins for the uh, I square C communication. So in this case, um, if I add this and then I add the button, I will not be able to pick 20 and 21 anymore because they're used by the LCD display. So this was not working. This was not prevented in the past. We have now built it in so that you not by accident can configure anything wrong or anything that does not work afterwards. All right. Um, uh, yes, I want to do this. And the last one is a little tiny bug fix, which was kind of sometimes just, uh, uh, well, it was a little weird. After changing a config name, the save button keeps still, uh, keeps, um, still stays gray and it did not turn active. So that means um, typically uh, MobiFlight, I'm gonna save this, just doesn't matter. So when you have saved and nothing has changed, then the save button will show you this. It's grayed out, it's not active. Um, if I go here somewhere and I'll make a change, even though if I just simply open and close the config wizard, it's gonna turn active and will say, okay, it assumes that you made a change in the config wizard. So let's save it. Um, in the past, when you made a change to the name, which often obviously is a, is a change, it would not detect this as a change. And now, but now it does. Now the save button turns active. It's a little improvement. It's uh, actually nice to have. All right. 
So with this, we're actually already at the end of this video because we, we reviewed everything that was part of A2. The major, major thing was that we're now able to access LVARs and AVARs, which is like super cool. It allows us to not use FSUI or not rely on FSUI PC necessarily anymore. There might be still some reason that you want to keep it, but at least like for some, for most of the, most of the information, you can actually um, just use the WASM module and SimConnect, which makes it lightning fast. And it's also just easier um, to handle and go with. So if you like Moby Flight, um, then please also like this video. Um, if you have comment and feedback, use the comments in the below the video or even better, join our Discord server um, or also join the website, sign up, and then you'll get access to the forums. Everyone on the community is super helpful. It's awesome. The Moby Flight community is a great bunch of people. I'm super proud that there is so much commitment and, and enthusiasm by all the, the people that are on the forums and in Discord and help each other. That's really, really amazing to see. It makes me super, super proud. And also, of course, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Um, uh, put, turn the alerting on, the notifications on, so that you get a notification whenever I upload a new video. And okay, that's that's it for today. Um, I wish you all happy landings, many happy landings in your flight sim, and a lot of fun building your home cockpit, and of course, using Mobi Flight. See you soon, guys. Bye bye.